Well, good morning and thank you for attending. Today I'm joined by Dr. Carol Zimbalati, public health physician, to give an update on the local COVID-19 situation and Shannon Mantha, executive director of clinical services and chief nursing officer. We'll provide an update on the vaccine rollout. Before we proceed, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge that the health unit resides on land covered by the robinson huron Treaty of 1850. This land is a traditional territory of the Anishinaabe people. This land is also part of the unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. I'd also like to acknowledge the Métis historical presence in the region. Today, we move into the next step of the reopening plan. The indicators are trending in the right direction provincially, and it is nice to have some good news. Throughout the pandemic, we have seen how we have been able to help slow the spread through vaccinations and behavior changes, such as wearing a mask or face covering, reducing contacts, physical distancing from others, and washing and sanitizing your hands often. It is still important to ensure that you're fully vaccinated against COVID-19 and have received your third dose. Provincially, things are improving. So let's continue to work together to keep one another well and keep the key indicators such as hospitalizations, ICU admissions, and deaths on their downward trajectory. So with that, I'll pass it over to Dr. Zimbalati. Thank you, Dr. Chirico, and good morning. As of yesterday at 3 p.m., there was one individual in the hospital due to COVID-19 and two additional individuals admitted to hospital for other reasons who have also tested positive for COVID-19. Locally, hospitalizations due to COVID-19 of health unit residents in the past two weeks have decreased by 90% compared to the prior two-week period. Our percent positivity is 13.5%, meaning that about one in every seven or eight people who receive a PCR test will get a positive result. This has stayed consistent since our last update 14 days ago. The provincial percent positivity is currently at about 10%. Since our last press conference, unfortunately, five individuals have passed away due to COVID-19 in our district. According to Ontario Science Advisory Tables dashboard, there are about 1,594 individuals in hospital in Ontario currently due to COVID-19. This is a decrease of 30% in the past week. Now back to you, Dr. Jericho. Thanks, Dr. Simbaletti, and I'll pass it over to Ms. Mantha. Thanks, Dr. Chirico. So tomorrow, individuals between the ages of 12 to 17 who received their second dose at least 168 days ago, which is about six months, those individuals will be eligible to receive their third dose of COVID-19 vaccine. We are so pleased to be able to offer this third dose to this age group to help protect them from COVID-19, keep them in school, and keep them doing all of the activities that they enjoy. You can make an appointment or walk into any clinic across the district. As of yesterday at 3 p.m., 3,950 individuals aged 5 to 11 have received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. This represents 46.6 of the 5 to 11 year olds in our health unit district. This still remains lower than the provincial rate of 53.9%. It is critical that we have our children vaccinated against COVID-19. Vaccinating your child provides them with a strong level of protection against COVID-19 and the variants. As said previously in previous press conferences, you can find information on our website at myhealthunit.ca forward slash kids COVID vaccine. Additionally, our call center is available to address any questions or concerns you may have. As I mentioned earlier, we're accepting walk-ins and this includes our children's clinics. Parents and guardians who wish to book an appointment for their child can do so online at the Ontario.ca book vaccine or by calling our health unit and speaking with a call center agent. To call the call center, the number is 1-844-478-1400. Thanks and now back to you, Dr. Chirico. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, so that ends our question or our uh, comments and we'll take questions now. So you can put them in the chat box to the left of your screen and we'll be happy to try and answer any questions that you might have. So I'll pass it back to Alex.
Hi, thank you. So at this moment we don't have any questions, so we'll just give it a moment to see if there are any that would like to come forward. And if not, then we will complete the press conference. Perfect, so we do have a question that's come in from Sarah Bisonet at the North Star slash Omegwin News. Can you put the number of deaths connected to COVID-19 since the start of the year in context for the public? It seems high given it's more than half of the deaths since the start of the pandemic. Dr. Zimbalati? Yeah, thank you for the question, Sarah. Certainly um, we have seen uh, an increased uh, burden in terms of deaths during the Omicron wave more than in any other previous wave. And I think this really does speak to the number of cases um, that we've had and therefore proportionately we are seeing um, a higher number of deaths, even though overall Omicron um, causes less severe illness. If it infects enough people and especially vulnerable individuals, um, it will cause severe illness and, and death in some. Um, though we can't provide any specifics on um, individual cases, um, generally the, the individuals who have um, unfortunately succumbed to COVID-19 have uh, been in the older age groups and with comorbidities in general. Yeah, and I'd just like to add that uh, uh, what we have experienced too and what the data is showing is that because we were able to get um, so many of the vulnerable people vaccinated and um, uh, third and fourth doses in the high, real high risk populations is really, really contribute to lessening the number of deaths uh, over the pandemic, especially uh, with the uh, spread of Omicron, which is, as Dr. Simbolati mentioned, is uh, you know, uh, very high. So the, the vaccines were really a tremendous benefit um, to have during this pandemic. Thank you. Our next question is for Shannon. It comes from Sarah Beesnet from the North Star. Vaccine numbers are very slow. Um, any way to encourage uptake? Sure, thanks for that uh, question, Sarah. So as more people are fully vaccinated and receive their third dose, it is expected uh, to see a slower increase in vaccination numbers. And absolutely over the last several weeks, we've seen a plateau and a decreased demand for the adult COVID-19 vaccine, whether it be for a second or a third dose. So we continue to offer vaccine clinics in the five hub districts. Um, across the across the region. Additionally, you will see in the coming weeks, we will be offer, continuing offering those clinics, but also switching some strategies up, which will include pop-up clinics and more mobile clinics to try to reach additional people and, and decrease some barriers that it may exist for access. So, I mean, if you're thinking about getting vaccinated, you're not really sure, but you have questions, give us a call. Take a look on our website for information and resources, and this can help you make a really informed decision about getting your vaccine. I, I'll just really finish about the benefits of being vaccinated, and I think Dr. Chirico and Dr. Zimbalati spoke a little bit earlier to some of these pieces, but, you know, thinking about it from a perspective of protecting you and those around you from COVID infection, uh, especially if if you know you live or work with anybody that could you know that is immunocompromised and could have severe illness or hospitalization as a result of a COVID infection, as well being vaccinated will help you feel more comfortable uh, as the province opens up and people are returning to work, returning to school in full force and sports and all the other activities that we enjoy. Thank you. Our next question is also for you, Shannon. It comes from Eric White at CBC. Are you concerned about the low uptake for booster shots in children under 11? And why do you think that is? So th thanks for the question. To clarify, do we mean the low uptake of uh, first and second doses for children? I think yes, so. For children yeah, okay. OK, so yes, we are concerned about this. Uh, we would like the uh, percentage of children in the district between five to 11 years of age that have at least one dose to be much higher than it currently is. It's, you know, sitting at, I think I said earlier about the 46% range. We'd like it uh, 
quite a bit higher. So in doing that, we're in trying to increase the rate of vaccine uptake among that age group. We, we continue to provide clinics, so providing access across the district in the five areas, but also offering uh, school based clinics in collaboration with our four local school boards. We're hoping these additional locations make it a bit more convenient for some and um, all of these vaccine clinics include walk-ins. Additionally, starting next week, we will be offering the 5 to 11 vaccine at all, um, uh, all of our COVID-19 vaccine clinics. So no matter what your age, you'll be able to get the appropriate vaccine for you. And one of the, the pieces I want to mention too is we are working quite closely with community partners who service families uh, between these ages. Just because it, we know that uh, you know, some families are not necessarily comfortable uh, talking to uh, to us or coming to a vaccine clinic and and may feel a bit more comfortable talking to a service provider that they have a trusted relationship with. So we are working closely with our community partners to try to align messaging and promote messaging and, and get information out there. Thank you. Our next question is for Dr. Chirko. It comes from Stu from Bay Today. As things open up over the next weeks and months, in which areas will the health unit enforce, if any? And is there well, any th focus? Well, thank you for that question, Stu. Um, if you look back over the entire pandemic, we really have not had to um, uh, use enforcement uh, as uh, very often, but we have when we need to do it. Um, and I think what I take away from that is the vast majority of people really comply and respect other people and recognize that they have to do their, each individual has to do their own part. Uh, and, and to get to where we are right now, which is we've come through this and, and, and the public should be very proud of, of what they've done to ensure that our healthcare system didn't get overrun. We've had some of the lowest case numbers. So moving forward to answer your question, we will certainly um, be monitoring. Um, and uh, I know that uh, masks will continue. And I think it's important that people um, continue to use the masks. It will eventually um, be eliminated, but in the interim, I think it's important to consider when you go into stores, consider other people around you, consider the, 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 the staff until such point as we can then uh, eliminate um, all of the restrictions, which is everybody's goal. But up until that point, it, it's really we're looking after each other. Thank you. Our next question is for Dr. Zimbalati. It comes from Sarah Bisonette from the North Star slash All Make News. The region has the hot has higher test positive positivity rate than Ontario in general. Does this raise a concern given the March 1st date for lifting all but masking? Thanks, Sarah, for that question. And I think it is a very pertinent one and one that is being discussed across the North as indicators across the North are um, showing that um, the wave is is impacting differently in different parts of the province with um, the the peaks of the waves being seen maybe a bit later in the north. However, I think locally in our district, um, still the majority of our indicators are trending in the right direction. Um, percent positivity it does bounce around a little bit, but in general, it is going in the right direction. Um, we don't have uh, large concerns at this point about uh, the further loosening of restrictions that uh, have been announced uh, recently for, um, uh, I believe for tomorrow. And then, um, you know, we'll have to see about March 1st, but um, I don't anticipate that um, we'll be in a position that we have grave misgivings about uh, the uh, further loosening of restrictions at that at that point. So we'll just have to see what happens. Um, but I think in general, um, North Bay Perry Sound, we're, we're doing all right in terms of our indicators. Thank you. Our next question is for Dr. Chirko. It comes from Clark from your TV. Um, 
Are you in favor of the vaccine passport system being removed as of March 1st? Well, I think we've got a lot of really good indicators that things are moving in the right direction. And if they continue on the, that trajectory, then um, it may be in a, we may be in a situation where, yeah, that's going to be uh, perfectly acceptable to, to remove that. Um, I think that it's really important to find the balance um, between opening the economy and that's still protecting the individuals uh, and the healthcare system from being overwhelmed, which we're doing. So we're headed in the right direction. I think that it should be the evidence at the time that would really inform that kind of decision to remove it. If things take a dramatic uh, change for the worse, and I don't believe that's going to happen, um, then we'd have to reevaluate it. But as the trajectory that we're on, how things are moving, I think it, it, it would be something that certainly uh, would be acceptable to, to many people and keep uh, people still well. There is a risk no matter what you do, and you have to consider that. Thank you. Our next question is for Dr. Zimbalati. It comes from Eric White from CBC. The provincial science table is reporting a rise in COVID rates in wastewater rates in the north over the last 10 days. This is something, is this something you're monitoring in your district? It's also recommended that northerners take it easy with the lifting of restrictions. Do you agree? So it is something uh, that is monitored in our district, but um, it really only one site. So our the findings uh, don't represent what's happening necessarily in the district as a whole. Also, there's quite a bit of variability in the readings that we're seeing locally, so it's difficult to um, assess the reliability um, or the value of uh, those readings when it's just um, for such a small population. Um, it's, they are difficult to interpret. So yes, we recognize that across the north, especially the northeast, um, there does seem to be some increase in signal. Um, what that means locally, I think uh, time will have to tell, but really we have to look at our indicators which are more reliable um, in terms of um, predicting how we're doing, we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks. Um, and the ones that kind of indicate where we are right now and where we are right now is that we are seeing um, as i mentioned we are seeing a dramatic decrease in um, hospitalizations due to covid locally we're also having we're seeing a lot fewer outbreak related cases and outbreaks in the highest risk settings so those are all positive indicators and we'll just have to, as Dr. Chirico said, um, keep on monitoring the indicators. And, and we, we, we do uh, look at the wastewater data, but it's certainly not a major consideration in terms of how we um, assess risk because it, it is fairly unreliable. So uh, we are looking at everything and um, we'll continue to make recommendations uh, based on what we're seeing. Um, at this point, we don't anticipate that we'll have to uh, put in increased measures. I think what it comes down to at this point is is people's personal uh, actions, as Dr. Chirico was mentioning, um, making sure that uh, you are vaccinated if you are eligible, especially with a booster shot if you are eligible, because we do know that that does reduce transmission and especially it does reduce uh, serious illness. Um, and it's also important that individuals do personal risk assessments in terms of um, assessing what uh, measures that they feel are most appropriate for them to take, um, perhaps over and above um, the current recommendations when engaging in activities outside the home and uh, socializing with others. Um, everyone you know, they know their own personal status best in terms of their own health risk, um, vaccination status and, and the concerns that they might have about um, people who are close to them. So I think at this point it really comes down to those uh, personal choices that individuals are making rather than imposing um, 
increased uh, restrictions for northerners that um, are not in place provincially. Thank you. Our next question is for Dr. Chirico. It comes from Sarah Bucinet from the North Star. Uh, are ongoing protests in Ottawa hampering efforts of the local health unit to ensure compliance with current COVID-19 regulations, example, masking in businesses and gatherings? I would say no. I think that the vast majority of people have been very respectful of others and uh, are been very compliant. Uh, Thank you. Perhaps I'll just add something to that, though, that there is a concern that a number of vaccine clinics in the area have had to be cancelled um, due to the protests. And I think that's something that, um, you know, is very unfortunate uh, in terms of uh, the outcome of the protests. I think, you know, if we're looking at uh, freedom and freedom of choice, that freedom to have a vaccine should also be there as well. Thank you. Our next question is for Shannon. For the youth vaccine, it comes from Sarah Bisonet from the North Star. For the youth vaccine, can you remind us, can children get vaccinated without parental consent or both parents' consent? Do they need their health card? Sure, yeah, good question. So when it comes to immunization, uh, really there's no specific age of consent. Our immunizers really determine if, if an individual that uh, is there for a vaccination can make an informed consent. And generally, you know, the five to 11 year age group, we do receive parental consent to vaccinate. Uh, as we get older, you know, the 12 and up, um, it, it really does vary. Uh, some can make an informed consent and some cannot, and that's up to the, the provider, the person providing the immunization. So um, I hope that answers your question adequately. It's not a, a black and white situation, but for our five to 11s, for sure, they've been with parental consent. Thank you. Now, our next question is also for you, Shannon. It, do we have any idea on the timeline for rollout of the COVID-19 vaccines for zero to two years and two to four years? So not right now. So we don't really have a sight line on this. It, we were expecting it uh, sometime this spring, we're thinking. It is in the process. And so as we receive updates from the province, we'll definitely let the public know. So um, really no update there right now, um, but it is being, uh, it is in the process of, of being assessed. Thank you. Our next question is for Dr. Chirico from Jamie from CTV. Dr. Chirico, what are your thoughts on loosening restrictions? Well, as I've uh, previously mentioned, it, it's a similar answer to what I've said before, and that I think it's very positive that uh, um, many of the indicators are in a downward trajectory, and that uh, that's really good news for everybody. And that again, it's um, based on, on that, that yeah, I'm in favor of um, loosening the restrictions, and that people continue to um, do what they need to do, uh, follow public health uh, uh, restrictions that are in place and um, and get as many people vaccinated as we can and we're on the a really good path right now and uh, it will continue to monitor closely and if anything changes then we'll have to adjust thank you our next question is for dr zimbalati from Stu from bay today would you please ex expand on the clinics canceling on the clinics canceled due to the protest? Is the North Bay police involved? Oh, sorry, I was uh, talking about protests happening in southern Ontario. Um, we have not had to cancel any clinics here uh, due to um, any recent protests. Thank you. Uh, so that concludes our uh, questions for today. So we will end today's press conference. Thank you very much. We'll see you in two weeks on March 3rd.